Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room where today we're going to be doing a little bit more crafting. That's right, you asked and I'm more than willing to deliver to see the little beetles or how I put together these little beetle brooches as well. Of course I showed how to do the moth version of these last week and then of course I asked if you wanted to see more of them mostly because I wanted to make more of them so thank you for obliging me and asking to see the beetles. So I'm going to make a couple more of these today and show you how I go about making them. It's very similar to how the moths are made but of course in a more beetly shape and we have a few more little additions with the legs and antenna and feelers and random things like that so let's go ahead and dive on in. And I do apologize for not having lipstick on yet here. Uh, I just am about to run out the door to go to lunch with my mom and I think I want to my lipstick on after I devour a bunch of bruschetta. All right, here we are again at the beading table, aka my desk, with my keyboard pushed out of the way. We're gonna make another beetle like this one. Very similar process to how I made the moth, just in a much simpler shape, honestly. And these do take a little bit less time because they are at least a little bit smaller. So I've got a little piece of brown felt here and a white gel pen so that I can draw on the felt and just create a basic shape here. The shape of that first beetle and like both, uh, you could do shield beetles or scarab beetles with this simple shape quite easily. Um, not that I'm making these very accurate. Uh, again, I'm kind of making these fantasy beetles, but we're gonna go ahead and make a scarab-ish beetle here. So this shape basically is like a rectangle with the top rounded off and the bottom pointed off, like uh, coming to a point. So if you think of it as like drawing a rectangle and then just rounding off the top and pointing the bottom, that's an easy way to draw this little shape in. I just like having a little bit of a guide to work off of so that I don't get get out of hand, you know, and so things don't get too wide or too giant or small or anything. Um, this is a good little size here. It's about an inch and a quarter wide, maybe in two inches, two and a half inches long here. And I'm just gonna grab some sequins. These are size three sequin. I think these are size three sequins, flat gold sequins. And I'm using gold seed beads as well in a size uh, 11. And I'm just going to be stitching these on where I take a needle up through the fabric, take a sequin, take a bead, and then I go back down through just the sequin so that the bead holds the sequin on. And if you put these quite close together, they will overlap a little bit and you can create like or fill in a space quite well with these. And I think the little beads on top of the sort of head or top portion of the beetle looks similar enough to a real beetle's texture in like the best way possible. Because of course, real beetles are a little bit creepy and we're going for the jeweled version. Um, again, I am a little bit afraid of bugs and by a little bit I mean uh, quite creeped out by them, but for some reason the jeweled version I am all about it. I don't know. This is my weird exposure therapy. It's like I always say. I'm totally fine with moths and butterflies and some beetles. The more like creepy and like New Zealand Weta a beetle looks, the less excited I am to even be anywhere near it. Um, I, you know, as a bit of a creeper, I do frequent like taxidermy shops or like oddities places and some beetles are unacceptable. Um, but small like jewel beetles, as long as they're uh, not alive or not actually n anywhere near crawling on me, I'm, I'm almost okay with. But pref I just prefer the jewelry version um, in all aspects of bugs. So, you know, I love Spider jewelry, I don't like spiders. I love beetle jewelry. I don't like, technically really like beetles much, even though they, most of them cannot hurt me, as we know. But now that I've filled in the whole top portion with sequins, as previously uh, explained, I'm going to go ahead and do a row of French knots underneath those. I am using six strands of that DMC embroidery thread again, and again, I have mixed the colors. So I have um, rust, dark plummy purple, and dark brown mixed together for a little um, mottled color or I don't know what this is called, like um, multicolored yarn, I suppose, to make these French knots. And again, I'm just, you know, wrapping the string on the needle three times, going back down to create those little French knots. And I'm going to do two rows of French knots underneath that, like, top portion of the beetle. And then I'm going to continue these French knots all the way around the perimeter of the outside of the beetle as well, just to kind of provide, like, a buffer for the rest of the beadwork I want to do. And it kind of creates a nice little, like, lip edge to these... Um, brooches, especially later when I attach the felt to the back and stuff like that. So here you can see me finishing off that little bumper row around the edge of the beetle here. Just again twisting my needle when I have to to make sure I can get it through the felt there. I am just using again regular craft acrylic felt here. Very inexpensive felt. Um, I do have a lot of beads and options available when it comes to like funny little beads. 
because again, I've been beading since I was like a child. So I have lots of little tiny seed beads in my collection or like my craft material box, I suppose, um, that could be kind of hard to find and acquire. But they have some small delicas and stuff at like Michael's and craft shops now. Of course, try and check out like local mom and pop bead short shops in your area because they might have more unique things. But I'm just going to weave this yarn through some of the stitches in the back to uh, tie it off instead of tying a knot. Um, that'll hold it firm enough for this, especially because all this is going to get covered up later and it's not going to receive like a lot of tension or anything ever to uh, come apart. But I've got my top filled in with sequins. I did a couple of purple sequins in the middle, as you can see there. And I've got my French knots under that and then around the edge. And now I'm going to thread my beading needle again with some brown thread. And I'm going to do a row of little sparkly round beads down the center of this little faux scarab that I'm making here. So I'm grabbing these purple iris beads. These are again just from Michael's in their like stranded beads section. Of course, uh, wait for those to go on sale because sometimes they go on sale for like buy one get one free or 50% off or you may get a coupon when it comes to those kind of places. But they have stranded beads at both Michael's and Joann's here in the United States. I don't know what the craft shops are like in other countries. Sadly, I have not explored many. I would like to, of course. A grand tour of other places stopping at their craft stores would be like my ideal like impossible situation but here i am just uh, i put one long strand of these down the center and then i'm just couching that down so again i'm just coming back up onto the top and like securing that uh, line of beads down that's something i'm gonna be doing for the rest of this as well but first before i bead bead the beetle with my beetle <clears throat> i'm going to go ahead and fill this in with satin stitch just as a little bit of padding for this area filling in that area that I had outlined with the French knots. So I'm filling that in with some satin stitch here, just with six strands, again, the full strand of the DMC um, thread in plum here. And then I am going to almost like couch that down as well. I'm sure there's a name for this. Like, I don't know if it's called pad stitching or tufted stitching, but it looks kind of like a tufted couch. It's just after you do the satin stitching, just to grab it in sort of like a brick pattern with a little stitch on the top, just to hold the longer stitches in place. That's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm sure this has an official name. I just have not looked it up. I apologize. Um, my embroidery, my days of knowing what embroidery stitches were called are long since gone, sadly. I haven't actually like studied embroidery for about 10 years, so I don't really remember what everything's called. But that's what this looks like as of right now. I think it's already cute. But let's go ahead and fill in these, I guess they would be like wing casings um, for actual beetles. Usually they have wings, they can fly, which is unfortunate, honestly. I feel like beetles would be a lot less creepy, actually, if they couldn't fly. Because the flying is what means they can come get you, you know? If, if they just crawl, then I can run away. I I run faster than beetles. But, um, you know, flying, I can't compete with that. Um, so I'm going to grab some, I think these are called bugle beads in copper. And then I'm putting an iridescent purple iris seed bead in between each of those. And I'm just creating a line of beads here to nestle up to that first row I put down the center. Of course, I'm going to mirror anything I do on this side onto the other eventually. But I just do a long strand of beads like that, secure it down, and then I'm couching it in the back down onto the onto the little beetle here making sure everything lays in place if anything you want this to be a little bit too tight like the beads almost don't fit in the zone because later when you shape the beetle to be a little bit more rounded um that it's better if the beads are tighter rather than loose so if you have like one bead too many in a spot it's almost better than having one bead not enough hopefully you kind of understand what i mean so like here when i'm doing each little row of beads if it's a tight squeeze that's actually a good thing because eventually when this is more rounded it will have the space to breathe that it needs basically but i'm coming up right next to that last row and i'll just feed on some more of course you can change the pattern up with this um, almost like the way you do patterns for like if you were knitting in basic knit purl stitch and you can do like patterns or cross stitch kind of patterns you can do that almost with beads imagine each stitch is a bead so you can make this have a little letter on it. You could have a logo on there of some kind. You could have it chevroned. You could have it checkerboarded. All different kinds of patterns are available to you. I'm just doing kind of a little random pattern with these different metallic beads. I was hoping this would match um, some, like a copper beaded handbag that I have, but it doesn't actually in the end match very well. I need like dark copper beads and I can't find any at the stores near me. So I'll have to order some online to make some dark copper beetles sometime or maybe another moth. I'd like to make more moths too, but the beetles take about four or five hours and the moths, of course, again, take like eight or ten. So the uh, time factor here, not so great. But again, I'm just making lengths of beads here, nestling them up right next to one another and then couching them down 
again, filling in this whole area quite tightly with beads. Um, and like, you'll get to the edge where those French knots are and you think, oh, that's the last row. And like, if you can push the knots aside and fit in one more row, do it. Um, so like really squeeze these in here. Again, once this is no longer flat, there will be space for that. So I'm really, you know, you can see me kind of like finagling this last row in here and really pushing it down so that these all sort of fit in here. And then the brooch, even the flat felt in my hand starts to get a little bit shaped. You can see it's starting to curl all on its own, um, which I consider is a good thing. So here I have my other side of my beetle all finished up. So the main body of my beetle is done here. And now I'm going to start working on all of the legs. And this is honestly, the rest of this is not fiddly compared to this. This is the fiddly part. I'm just using some random like brass wire that I have on hand. I'm not even sure what this is because the labeling is years gone. Um, I think it's probably 26 gauge wire. I'm not exactly sure. Um, again, it's just what I have on hand, but like a, any semi-flexible wire is good. Um, I had bought this for wrapping beads originally. Of course, you could use very nice sterling silver wire if you wanted to, and you could use base metal wire if you wanted to. It's not really going to matter. But I'm just shaping the little legs, and then I kind of create this little bar across, and I'm using actually a crimp tool. Um, so dip back into those beading supplies for making beaded jewelry. So I'm using my crimp tool here, and I'm using the kind of flat end of that to bend this into a little bar across the way. So I, like, I make one leg, then create this little raised bar area that I will use to sew this down. It's nice if both legs are on the same wire like this. It just means, gives them a, the whole thing a little bit more stability and means you can bend the legs, I don't know, and it'll stay better. Like if they're, if they are separated, if each one is individual, it actually, you can't position them as well, weirdly enough. Um, this is the more fiddly and annoying bit. I'm stringing on both beads and sequins here and that little foot like the little end of these uh, legs is just the wire uh, turned into a little loop. I'll show you how I finish off this one. So I have a round nose plier and a wire cutter sitting here. So I just cut myself a tiny bit of room, maybe three or four millimeters of space on the end. And then I use these tiny round nose pliers to turn that into a tiny loop. And then to make it look a little bit more finished and intentional, I'm using the crimp tool to close that a little bit um, smaller. And then I'm using the flat end of the crimp tool to flatten this wire. So it almost looks like a little bit hammered, um, like it was meant to be there as opposed to just is my way of finishing this off. So that's just kind of how I went about making all the legs for these, uh, make the antenna in the same way. You can actually just leave these, um, the, like the leg part straight and then try and bend them into shape after you have them sewn on. It's a little bit easier actually. I've now made quite a few of these beetles. And so I've uh, been, changing my technique as I go, I suppose. So now I kind of just leave the legs straight until I have everything sewn on and then I bend them into the correct, and by correct, I mean whatever shape I want. Um, again, I'm not really referencing any real beetle to make these. Um, you could though, certainly just like how I was doing the moth and kind of doing an artistic interpretation of a real moth. You could do that with beetles as well. Again, I'm just going to snip off the end of my wire once I have it as long as I want to. Scarabs have actually quite short antenna, so that's what I'm doing for this. Um, even though this brooch doesn't look very much like a real scarab, but you know, the general silhouette is similar. And then again, I'm just going to squeeze that little round end of this shut and then clamp it flat. I'm um, just using the like, I mean, the wire is quite soft. And so like I can easily with my hand, just clamp this a little bit flat, give it a little bit of a hammered finish to that end of the antenna. And this one, you can see like the more kinks you add into the bar, of these, like the more the beads stay in the place where you want them. So it's almost nicer to give yourself a few more bends in there, as long as your wire can handle it. If you bend the wire too much, it will snap and then you have to start over, which is unfortunate. So do be delicate and careful with this stuff. You can see, I just have this big pile of craft wire. It's not very fancy, but of course, if you wanted to make it fancy, you could, you could do this whole kind of thing in very, you know, in Swarovski crystal and sterling silver, if you wanted to. Although I've heard a rumor that they're not making Swarovski craft crystals anymore. I don't know if they're not making beads, but they might, I don't think they're making flat back anymore. So I think there's been like a run on crystals, but I didn't actually look into that. I just saw like a vague rumor on the internet. So, you know, that could be complete BS, who knows? But here I am just making the rest of my legs. Of course, uh, bugs usually have six legs unless they're an arachnid. So it's important to have six legs and uh, some antenna, basically. That's usually the general idea. But again, these are fantasy bugs. You can make them have as many or as few legs as you want, um, if you should just so desire. I haven't made a spider yet, mostly because I don't, I would have to make quite a large one to be able to fit the pin back on it. And I don't have a design yet in mind that I quite like. 
So we'll see. I might make one later. I have to, I literally must stop making these because I have to make that Mandragora gown. Um, and I have other projects that I want to finish up before the holidays. And it's already December 6th somehow as I speak to you right now. So, oh my. But I, of course, would like to make some of these in like an olive green or chartreuse color. I would like to make some in purple, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. So maybe I'll give myself a nice like Christmas break where I get a day to make more beetles. Because even though I have, what, I have six of them now I've made? <clears throat> um, I'll show you later in this video. I've made five or six of them. I want them in every color. And it's almost a shame that I figured out how to make them because before I could I just had to like save up and hoped to find trovelor ones that I liked but now I can make them not that I don't like the trovelor ones again still the trovelor are nicer than these just because the stitching is finer and the materials are more unique but this will do in a pinch but now I'm again cutting my extra felt into little tabs and folding those tabs to the inside um this again I'm starting to shape it with my hands as well so the felt is very moldable um and as I'm doing this I am shaping it into a more rounded shape so I'm kind of folding the tabs in not just under so it's flat, but under a little bit extra so that it becomes rounded and is more of a like cabochon almost shape. And I can put in extra pieces of felt in here if I need to, or like layer it up in different areas to create a more rounded shape. It's just almost like sculpting with the felt at this point. Um, and again, this is just craft felt, it's not wool felt. So if you had wool felt, it would behave even better. And you could like felt the back of this if you wanted to, I like needle felt it, um, which would be advanced. But I'm just folding in my little tabs here, and then I'm going to take this extra piece of felt that's on the right hand side of the screen. I'll just cut that into an oval and use it to kind of stuff the hollow of the middle of the back of this. So I'm just going to cut this into a bit of an oval, and I'll sew that on top of these tabs just to really kind of, uh, it's not like a plush toy, but it's not not like a little plush, plushy. So you kind of want to stuff the back with an extra piece of felt just so this is nice and rounded and a little bit 3D. And again, I'm just going to throw in some like very loose stitches in here to hold all those tabs together. I've got it pinned how I want it now, and then I'm just going to stitch everything so that it holds on its own. And these stitches are all going to be covered up later, so it doesn't matter how messy they are. And the brown melts right into the brown uh, felt, so you really cannot see them even at close range, so let alone on camera. So I do apologize for that. But you can see I have lots of different beads and sequins out and available to me while I do this, just because it is kind of a impressionistic sort of process, just deciding what I want on the fly, um, and also because I was planning on making even more of these, because I cannot be stopped, as previously established. But now that I have the felt backing on there, I've sewn on this extra little oval of felt as well to help fill in, round out my beetle here. I have again a piece of hat making buckram, or um, it's like stiffened cotton canvas woven stuff. Here again you could use, I mean anything, uh, like stiffened felt or canvas, or again, like a thin cardboard even, um, something that you can stitch through, obviously. Uh, a little piece of leather would work actually quite well. Even backing these in uh, like a thin leather or a faux leather would work really well, or suede would be super nice. But here I'm just using a little piece of buckram to give this a little bit more stability back here before I stitch on all those legs and the pin back as well. Pin back last. Just feeding the needle through the body here and cutting that off like so. So now I have my little rounded beetle cabochon, beetle button, although to make buttons like this would be amazing. It would be super fun. So now I have my antenna and I'm going to go ahead and stitch these on. Um, I'm really just like doing a combination of like whip stitching and blanket stitch almost just to stitch these on in any way I can. Um, I am using a beading needle, otherwise known as a beetle, <clears throat> Um, to stitch these on because the beading needles are so flexible it allows you to make stitches that you couldn't do with like a thicker needle. Um, you can get like squeeze into little spots because it's a very flexible needle so I think it's super useful for doing weird 3D things like this. But um, the nice thing about having the bars across these legs and uh, feelers and stuff like that is that it gives you a whole bar to secure down to the brooch and so these end up feeling very secure on here and then you can bend them a little bit and pose them how you would like I mean, again, don't bend it too much because bending back and forth on this like lightweight beading wire will eventually break the wire. So you only have so many options when it comes to like finally posing them. But um, when they're nice and secure like this on these bars, you do have a little bit of a posability uh, moment, which is nice. So I'm just stitching on my tiny little antenna here. And then now that they're on, I can kind of bend them in shape, like I said, like so. They kind of stick out in this way on a uh, scarab. Scarabs are very gross bugs, by the way, in case you didn't know. 
But um, they're like a type of dung beetle, I think. I'm pretty sure. I haven't done much research because of all the things I want to do research about, it's not that funny enough. Um, but of course, they were very uh, immortalized by the ancient Egyptians. And therefore, we associate them mostly with that as opposed to their nastier habits. <clears throat> These little bars uh, across the legs, I was like holding them up to the uh, beaded scarab to create the size of the bar that I needed in between, like to kind of size out how far they needed to be apart. But actually, once the scarab is like stuffed and sewn together, it is a little bit thinner um, because obviously you've used that to create the 3D-ness of it all, so it's less far across. So do keep that in mind. Um, the bars should be a little bit thinner than the brooch because once the brooch is puffed up, it will become a little bit thinner. Once again, I hope that makes any sense. Here I am sewing on the pin back. This is just a cheap pin back from, again, Michaels. Um, and I'm just sewing through the entire brooch directly here. You can see I'm poking all the way through to the outside and just taking a tiny stitch on the outside that gets hidden underneath a bead or two. It's just not seen um, because it just gets like shoved under these, underneath the sequin or something. And so the stitches don't show on the outside, but this means that the pin back is very secure on here since it's sewn all the way through. And at this point, we are almost done. It's time to put the backing on. So again, I have a little another, another piece of felt here that's a little bit bigger than I need. And again, I'm going to mark where the pin back ends are so that I can cut slashes into my felt piece and slip this on over the like top and bottom of the pin back thingy. This really just provides such a clean look inside of these, which is super nice. It means that like the brooch will never get stuck on anything that it's not supposed to get stuck on, I suppose. Let's see, mine are called bar pins, nickel free. They're just super cheapy pin backs that I found again at the craft store. I do test them before I sew them on though to make sure that it's like a tight, good pin back before I sew them onto one of these. I wouldn't want to have to change it out. Although you could definitely, which is nice. But here I am trimming that felt down to size. I like to start with it larger and then custom fit it here <laughs> to the backs of these as I go, um, just because I think it's easier to get the correct fit doing it that way as opposed to trying to cut out the correct shape beforehand. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and blanket stitch the felt together, uh, like the felt of the beetle to the backing felt. So it really just uh, clamps all those little layers together. And of course the struggle here is that it keeps getting caught on the little legs. So be careful. <sighs> it's very irritating, honestly. But if I were to slow down and do this carefully, then I wouldn't have that problem. But me, slow down? No, I need time to make another beetle. It's a huge problem. Um, so I'm just sliding all the way around this beetle here, using again a beading needle to do this because again, that flexibility is great when working on something 3D like this. And once the backing is on, my little scaraby friend is finished like so. So now you can live with the first beetle I made. Um, I started making the legs a little bit curvier and I started using sequins threaded on like beads on the legs, which I think gives a fun look. That was another thing I saw on Trove Lord brooches because again, I'm very inspired by those. I love them, but they are quite pricey because they are super nice. They're like the fine jewelry version of this. This is the costume jewelry version. Um, and the Trovelor ones are embroidery on a, on a different level. <clears throat> but I love both greatly now. And I took some of these larger olive green sequins and I bent them in half to give them a little bit more texture. And I'm using a couple of those on this next beetle here. I just wanted to throw in a little bit of this other beetle for some al alternate design options here. So here I've filled in the entire head of the beetle or top of the beetle with, again, variegated um, two-tone embroidery thread. And again, that's just DMC cotton embroidery thread. And I just did French knots to fill in the entire head of this one, as opposed to sequins and beads. Um, you can alternate where these things go. It's like the same four or five stitches or little tiny techniques and uh, material options. And then just deciding where to put them kind of is what determines the end result of your little beetle here. But I have these bent sequins that I'm putting sort of as the connection bit between the head and the body on this particular beetle. This one obviously is going to be a longer little skinny beetle as well, and I will make it have longer antenna. You'll see later on this one. I just, instead of doing little tiny short stubby antenna, I did nice long creepy antenna. A, a real bug, a real beetle like this with long antenna would be such a no. It would be so creepy. This one is on the creepier side, I will admit. Again, I also am afraid of bugs, but for some reason, I, I like them. It makes no sense. It's like a, a very much a weird Venn diagram somewhere in my brain where it's like, as long as bugs plus jewelry, fine. Bugs without jewelry, not fine. Um, I don't know how my brain works, but 
I find these uh, jeweled ones very cute. And real bugs are very creepy. So, you know, I have I can't explain it. I, I think I've tried it too many times. And we still can't get there. Again, I'm putting a line of beads down the middle of this. Then I again went around the edges with those French knots. This time in a black and green mixture. And then again, I filled in the two like wing case sides with satin stitch. And now I'm, again, stabilizing that satin stitch down with that kind of brick stitch above it. Again, not sure that's what that's called, but uh, hopefully you can kind of see what I mean. Um, I am using two-tone thread here, so it's harder to see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to fill in both sides of the wings again with little tiny seed beads. These ones are, I think, size 15 seed beads. They're tiny. Um, and I'm using a green iris iridescent bead here and then a black, uh, like, three-sided check glass seed bead. For those of you who know your seed beads, um, there's lots of varieties out there. But these are teeny, teeny, tiny, which gives a very, like sparkly look in the end so it's kind of nice to have such small ones but again i'm going to do this the same way long long lines of beads like this across the length of the wing ish and then i'm going to bring the needle up from the back about every two or three beads and um, secure those that line of beads down to the backing and then again i will make my antenna and legs for this one and i will show you how, how this one came out again i made the antenna a little bit longer on this I was hoping that this one would match a green iris beaded handbag that I may have splurged on and bought myself for Christmas. Um, <clears throat> so you'll be seeing that eventually here. Oh, I should not have, but it, I've on, only time I've ever seen a, you know that blue iris beaded bag I have? <clears throat> the only time I've ever seen one of those in green, it was like $500. And so when I saw one for a lot less than that, I could not resist. <sighs> It's green sparkly. What do you want from me? But here's how that one turned out. I used a lot of tiny sequins on the antennas and legs for this one as well. But with the longer antenna and the wiggly legs, that's what this one looks like in the end. They really come together once you put the legs on, even though it's a fiddly job, let me tell you. Eek. But there's my scarab as well, my new green beetle. Here's my original one that I made last week. Um, I kind of think I'm improving as I go here. And then here is an iridescent black beetle I made as well, a little bit more of a, again, a kind of scarab-ish shape on this one. You can see I did the bugle beads across the body on this one as well. I really am looking forward to making more of these little guys, um, but I just, of course, have to find the time because I'm supposed to be making that Mandragora bodice, which sadly is not coming this week. Sorry, spoiler alert, Mandragora bodice not happening this week just because I haven't even started yet. So I really need to get on that so I can finish up that costume before the end of the year here, which of course is coming up fast on me. Thank you as always for watching this video today, and I will see you again here real soon. Bye.